Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, if you're like me and you've been playing a whole lot of World of Warcraft right now, you would have spent a decent amount of time in Ardenwild, probably the most beautiful zone I've ever seen in World of Warcraft. I decided I needed a piece of wall art from it, so I am going to make this glaive from Ardenwild. I started off by printing off a very pixelated, low resolution uh, photo, basically just used as a template. Nothing, nothing high details really needed from this picture, so it didn't really matter. I then transferred this to 10 millimeter high density EVA foam from Lumen's workshop. This frame's nice and sturdy and strong, great for making weapons. Doesn't have a lot of flex, which is probably a good thing for this. I also drew my guides a little bit further away from the bevel than I need. Gives me a bit more allowance to sand down that bevel without going too far. I then used my Stanley knife or a box cutter, if you will, to cut these out. I also did end up doubling the thickness of this glaive, so you'll see me stick it on top of another piece of 10mm with the contact adhesive from Bunnings. It's just a very similar to contact cement or barge, if you will. I also used a silly brush squeegee. These are bought off Amazon. It's fantastic. It's a little silicon spatula that has a, a nice flat side for spreading out glue, and because it is silicon, nothing sticks to it. You can just peel the glue off after you're done. I then took my knife and I started whittling down each edge give it a bit more uh, depth and dimension in the middle make the branches look like they're overlapping and also cut in the bevel i take off as much material as i can so when i do come to sanding it down and dremeling it's a lot less material to go through and then it doesn't end up as a fine dust all over my house I did add an, a third piece of 10 millimeter foam just in that middle bit to thicken it up a little bit more so I would require less foam clay. Uh, the foam clay I'm using is this lightweight foam clay from Lumen's Workshop. I put water down first to help it adhere to the base and then I used water again to help smooth it out. I wasn't super clean with my sculpting job because I knew I would be dremeling it so there wasn't much point finessing the sculpting too much. I also used a lot less foam clay than I thought I was going to. After that foam clay dried, I took my glaive to my belt sander. Uh, these things are very noisy, very dangerous, but they do an amazing job at uh, creating bevels on the edges of blades because it is a nice big flat sanding surface. I also just try to make sure I'm constantly checking the bevel as I go because I can't really see great <laughs> while I'm sanding it. So I, I stop a lot and have a look and then take off a little bit more and I, I creep up on my edge as opposed to trying to take it all off at once. I then took my power file. These tools are amazing for foam smithing. Once again, very noisy, but super duper handy. Sometimes the Dremel can leave divots, whereas I find this leaves a nice flat line. I actually learned about these file sanders through artifacts after watching them use them. I also rounded off the top, cleaned up some of that foam clay that I didn't need there, and then I went back in with my Dremel with a higher grit barrel and just smoothed it out again. You get a lot more control with the Dremel. I also use a flexi shaft, I believe they're called, on my Dremel. It's It causes a lot le less pain in your wrist if you're using a Dremel for a long period of time. It gives you a bit more control. It also helps keep foam dust out of your Dremel a little bit more, which can prolong the life of your Dremel. If you're wondering what that weird box is, that is a downdraft box. So my vacuum plugs into that and it creates a vacuum to help catch some of the foam dust that gets in the air because foam dust can uh, fly pretty far.
I then went and started shaping the branches a little bit more. Giving them a bit more dimension and thickening them up. I drew that white line, which is where the ridge ends on up against the bevel. I just went in with foam clay and just started building up that surface. I wasn't super neat again with the foam clay because I knew it would be a lot easier for me to dremel it down rather than sculpt it perfectly. This is when it started to look really bad, but if, if just stick with me, it'll get better. I then went back in with my high grit a uh, larger sanding barrel on my Dremel and started smoothing out all the rough surface of foam clay that I'd left behind. You have to keep in mind that foam clay also shrinks as it dries just a tiny bit. So always try to exaggerate things that you're sculpting and allow for that tiny bit of shrinkage. As you can see, I took down that ridge quite a lot because it did have to be more of a flat than a rounded edge. I then took my white gel pen and started drawing on the details, all of the uh, the cracks and the lines, make it look a bit more like a weed. I find adding these lines really stops me from going a little bit overboard when you get carried away dribbling in those details. And then grabbed my vacuum to make sure I could catch all that foam dust that comes flying off it and my smaller Dremel head and started Dremeling in, sanding in all those, all those edges, all the, the strange organic textures. I really like working with organic textures. It's, it's a lot easier than a clean, shiny surface. There's a lot, a lot of places to, uh, to hide. I primed this glaive with Epsilon Pro. This is similar to XCC if you've ever used that on your 3D prints before, except it stays flexible. So it's a two part solution that you mix together and it forms a pretty sturdy, flexible uh, priming method for EVA foam. It's also sandable, which is really handy. So because it settles and then you can sand it, it it's like zero brush strokes once you're done. You just got to be careful not to go on too thick, otherwise all your details will get filled. And then started sanding that after it had cured, so the next day-ish. Started sanding that back with a uh, pretty low grit sandpaper just to smooth off. I really wanted the bevel to be pretty clean. The rest of, of, the, uh, of the glaive, I didn't worry too much. I just tried to minimize brush strokes, things like that. I also find making the uh, the surface a bit rougher helps paint adhere to it. If it was just shiny, I find the paint doesn't stick as nicely. Once again, at a very ugly stage. I then bought some fake plants from Ikea around the corner and I cut off the leaves. So the bigger leaves are more of a fabric. So the paint stuck to those really nicely. The smaller green ones you'll see, I had to wipe them off with acetone because there was like a clear varnish that was inhibiting the paint from sticking. So I gave them a quick wipe down with some nail polish remover, which has acetone in it. And that helped a lot take off that, helped take off that varnish a little bit. All the paints I use are Vallejo acrylic airbrush paints. I don't thin them. I use them straight out of the bottle. It's their premium range, I believe. They're pretty good all around airbrush paints. So I started by adding that blue towards the stem and then I faded that into that beautiful purple and then into a lighter kind of lilac up the tip. All the weapons from Ardenwield have a very fairy glow to them. So I found using that white as a base coat really made the colors a lot brighter. 
The smaller leaves I started off doing green and then I found they blended into the glaive a little bit too much so I did repaint them more of a blue afterwards. I then added a darker um, shadow in the middle of the leaf. I believe they're called veins in leaves. Just to add a bit more detail. I then took some black warbler and I rolled it into some little spheres to make the little center, center of the flowers. I didn't prime them because I wanted to have the nice organic texture. I then took my quilters, I think it's called quilters tape. It's a super handy thin masking tape that you can use so it, it has a little bit of flex to it so you can actually go around corners if you're careful enough with it. And then just took some regular masking tape and masked off that silver edge that I may have forgotten to record painting. I laid down white, once again makes all the colours on top super bright. Starting with a good base coat can, can really change how paints look. So every colour here was basically mixed in the same pot. Because it is a gradient from a green into a blue into a purple, to make the gradient as smooth as possible, I used, continually used the same uh, pot of paint and just added the gradient that I was moving on to into that pot so it would, it would transition much smoother. So I started with that very light mint green and then I started adding blue to that to create this color. I then went in a, with an even, even darker blue, so I added a little bit more blue to that mixture and went over the, the fine lines again. And then I added even more blue and started painting on practically was what was blue at this point. But the transition was much smoother just from starting off with that same colour. I then started adding purple to that same little pot of paint. Slowly, gradually turning that into more of a purpley blue. Super descriptive words, I know. Until I had pretty much purple at the tips. I then went in with a darker purple into all the, uh, the finer details. Make it look a bit more interesting. I also added a bit more green towards the center. I then went in with a very fine brush and white with a little bit of that teal added into it just to make these ridges pop a little bit more. And went in with a darker green into each, each gap in the branch. I don't know what you would call those. Split? I think they're splits. Wood splits. Yes. I used a rattle can gloss coat. It was actually a semi-gloss. I didn't want it too shiny because trees aren't shiny. 
I just wanted to seal the paint in, and sometimes adding a clear coat can make the colours even more vibrant. So I just did one one medium coverage coat. So for the for the leaves, I actually used a drill to drill into the epsilon. You can stab it in, but I feel like it's a lot cleaner to use a drill. So I would line up where they go, drill a little hole. I made sure I drilled on an angle so they would angle up as opposed to sticking out. I used a little bit of super glue on the tip of each one and just slid it in. And once it dried, it wasn't going anywhere. And the reveal. I am so, so happy with this, how this turned out. The Having it up on my, my prop wall, it really contrasts a lot of silver and gold items that I've made. Whereas this one is just full on art and world colour and I love it. Thank you so much for watching my video guys. I hope to see you again in the future.